Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review. And I'm here today to talk to you about Secrets of a Small Town. Now this was an unaired ABC pilot that happened back, I believe in 2006. And what's ironic about it is I watched this probably about like three times. Um, I remember I was researching something on Wikipedia about unaired pilots and then looking on YouTube to see if I could watch them to see, you know, if they were any good or not. I believe it was because the Wonder Woman on air pilot was like online leaked. And so I was researching that and stuff. And so as I was researching that, I found something that said with Lucy Hale in it. I'm like, oh, I remember her from Pretty, um, Pretty Little Lies. And I also remember when she was on Wizards of Waverly Place. So I checked it out. I'm like, oh, okay. So I found it on YouTube, right? This was many, many years ago. There was so many people in that that I had no idea who they were at that time. It stars a very young Lucy Hale, but she's like barely in the pilot. Um, it has a lot of famous people. It has um, Angie Harmon, Kaylee Cuoco. It has um, Meghan Markle, who I had no idea who, was that, who that was at the time. And I had a hard time trying to find her in there. I can only find one blackish looking girl. So it has to be her, but it looks nothing like her if it is her um lighten minster like oh denise richards i mean like there were just so many like famous people in that and it didn't get picked up and i remember when i watched it i'm thinking to myself you know it's kind of cliche here and there but it's pretty good and stuff you know like it wasn't like hit you over the head top amazing like it needed it had some flaws in it, it needed to be tweaked out a little bit more but for the most part, it was a pretty good, decent pilot and stuff. The only problem is you've seen these type of storylines over and over and over again. What's ironic is like I said Lucy Hale, Pretty Little Liars. Some plots that was in that follow the Pretty Little Liars. There was a show on NBC last of one season called Deception. And many of the storylines that happened in this pilot happened in that show. There have been like other things similar to it like um secrets in a small town instead of of it was like a tv show i never seen there was a movie called similar to that like, it's been like so much stuff and it always revolves around like some type of girl missing or something like that um but yeah it's like and kaylee cuoco i still can't even find her in this pilot she's there <laughs> now there are a couple of blonde girls I have no idea which one she is because this was like so many years ago and she was probably like a teenager at that time. This is way before she was on Charmed and that other comedy series and stuff. And so like, yeah, so I have to like rewatch this again so I can see if I can find her so I can use like the picture still and stuff. But it's ironic. Um, so like basically what this um, revolves around. So Lighten's character, she is this on the cliffside shore and like she's laying, like just laying on the ground and she's laying like she's just relaxing, you know, her hands behind her head, but then a fly lands on her face. She's not flinching whatsoever. Turns out she is dead. Somebody murdered her. And so like, this was, um, gets reporters and like all the news crews and stuff they're trying to figure out you know like, what happened to this girl um because she's not famous but her father is pretty wealthy and her father you know he has some secrets pretty much everybody in this show has secrets every character you see in this is connected in some way or another either from present day or past um, and, this, and the cast is way too big. It's one of those big murder mysteries that has a huge cast and everybody's connected in some way or another. So you're kind of like, okay, well, who is the murderer? Who is the, like, the kidnapper? No, who is this and that, you know? And so, like, it's just way too many people. And the whole part of everybody being connected, they crammed all of that in the pilot. So it doesn't give you time to breathe because you're getting way too much information at once, but you're getting very vague information, like little footnotes. Basically, this pilot was just like a setup for like the characters and stuff. And if it would have went to like a full series, I wish that 
they will just take their time, um, you know, to analyze more of the characters out for the viewers and just like, you know, give us time to breathe and just like take everything in at a time and then show how everybody's connected instead of just dumping it all on us like in like the pilot, you know? So that would have been interesting if they would have done that. But like I said before, this has been done so many times before, better. Um, so it's kind of, it's really a shame that this didn't get picked up. But if it did get picked up, we wouldn't have Lucy Hale on Pretty Little Liars. So, you know, a win-win there, you know? <laughs> Even Samantha Mathis is in this. And ironically, she plays a character named Samantha. <laughs> I don't understand when care like when people play characters of the same name. I don't get that. But anyway, so the young girl who's dead, her name is Kelly Rose, and she, like I said before, her dad Russell, he's a very like wealthy man. But the thing about Kelly is she has a twin sister named Carla, and apparently both Carla and Kelly went to a party one night, and. Kelly ended up dead and Carla is now missing. So the whole town is like looking for her. I gotta say, they don't really do a great job of looking. They have a search and rescue, but you don't really see them search. You just see them gear up their stuff and a couple of ATVs out. Um, the show doesn't really spend focus on finding her. because They're too busy setting up every character and all of their secrets. <laughs> There's a famous news reporter. Uh, played by Angie Harmon. She is Bethany Steele. And so her boss, who she is dating, he wants her to go back to her hometown and, and investigate and interview people. She doesn't want to. She's very reluctant, but she goes anyway. What's interesting about this is that this show revolves around Bethany, who's the reporter, and her sister, who's a sheriff. And that's kind of a very unique dynamic because you know the news reporter people are always in everybody's face and everybody's business and the cops just want you to stay out so that is kind of interesting that she would play like a news reporter type person kind of like a lois lane and so she's doing like all the investigation stuff and that's a really unique dynamic how often do you see tv shows that have that type of person sitting around as the main like cast you know so she goes there with her cameraman named quinn Qu uh, her and quinn have a very awkward drive she doesn't want to talk Cause she doesn't want to go back home and he's just the black guy on the show they didn't give him nothing to do all these characters and, and like he's the only one who doesn't have a secret because he's not from that town but it's just like i hate when shows do this like they, they cast like a person of color and they give them absolutely nothing to do so while she's in town she meets with her sister because she goes home and her sister asking, you know, what are you doing here? We haven't seen you in about eight years. And you didn't come back when mom died. You didn't come back when I got married. And it's just they have a very strained relationship, you know. And so they don't really get along. And Samantha doesn't really want nothing to do with it. So all the news reporters, they're hounding Russell um, Rhodes and everything. Like I said before, he is the like, main person of interest and stuff because like he's the father. When he was at the party, he well, he went to the party to pick up the twins, and he grabbed one of them by the arm, and it got kind of rough. They don't explain much of what happened. He's a very older man. He doesn't want to talk to the reporter. He doesn't want his family to. He's trying to reassure his younger son, Peter, that, you know, you have to be strong right now. Or your sister is dead. And, but he has an older brother. Well, Russell has an older son. Peter has an older brother that also died of mysterious circumstances. Everybody has a secret. Russell sneaks out of the back to go get his car because the news reporter is all in the front. And what's so bizarre and cliche is that Bethany is waiting for him in his um, shared garage. And it's just kind of like, she just shows up out of nowhere, kind of like this noir like investigator type thing. And it's just so weird. It's meant to be cool, but it just comes off as strange. and like they kind of like get into it a little bit and all like oh you know i know your secrets and blah blah and it's all like you should never came back and so it's kind of like, like what's the deal between those two you know denise Richards, she plays brenda she is his trophy wife way younger than him and so she's just there for like the money and the wealth and everything she has an affair with him with some other guy who's unnamed in this thing 
And so he, and her, the guy she's having a fit, he's always lurking around. And so, like, Brenda, she is not supposed to talk to the reporters, but she does it in a way. Give them, like, lemonade just so she can be in front of the camera and tell her sob story of how, like, Kelly's, they, they're, like, the same age and everything. And it's so sad they died. They're not the same age. <laughs> she's, like, a 30-something, no, like, a 20-something-year-old woman. And Kelly's, like, a teenager. <laughs> Peter, he's the quiet, strange little dude. He um, doesn't want to have the funeral because he says too soon. He's sad about his sister dying. He is the weird kid with the camera who's always going around videotaping everybody. And he was even at the party videotaping like um, all the like girls that are there and all this other stuff. And then he he drives uh, he, when he rides his bike out somewhere out in the town. He goes into like a shed. And he goes underneath it and he has a bunch of cassette tapes for his camera. Um, old school, like I said, 2000s and stuff, right? And he's always watching the footage of all the people that he's recording. People get tired of him recording them. Brenda does not like it. Um, Brenda feels like he saw something. He thinks he knows who the killer is. Brenda ends up like threatening him and stuff because he's always around with that camera. Chances are he probably has her having an affair on on, on um, the dad and stuff. Then he gets spooked because Brenda's like little buddy, like um playtime buddy, is like snooping around that shit for some bizarre reason. He's a search and rescue guy. One of them is like a doctor. He was once engaged to like Bethany. And then she ran off at the altar. So there's, there's history with them. And so they get to talking. He's upset. Come on, I moved on and everything. She, of course, is dating the one dude. And then him and her had like a talk in like a bar or something like that. And she clearly still has feelings for her. Then it seems like her boss is kind of like in town spying on her. Like they, they're trying too much in this pilot. They're trying to make it so mysterious and like so poppery and everything. That it gets kind of like comedic at times. Why is her boyfriend, who's her boss at the news place, spying on her? Like, you know? The rescue dude, he calls his brother Chad. Chad is in the watch on um, the light tower. And the light tower is just this giant light tower. He's drunk, passed out from the party. Chad is the one who like banged both of the twins the night before the, um, the party. Before one of them ended up missing and the other one dead. He is dating... Um, Samantha's like kid and everything, played by Lucy Hale. Samantha's kid, Trisha, she's just a teenager with a little bit of attitude and stuff. She's friend with the Meghan Markle character. Um, she's like all in lovey dovey with um Chad, there's not much with her, but she's always hanging around her aunt, like she really cares about her aunt. I bet you anything they was gonna set it up that. Trisha is really Bethany's kid. Why? Because they both had the same hair color. Samantha does not. Um, Samantha is dating this sketchy guy named Jimmy Lee. People have warned her, don't marry him and stuff, but she did it anyway. What's the story with him? Don't know, because the show never got picked up. However, when they found Kelly, there was a footprint. The footprint matches Jimmy Lee's shoe print. So yeah, why was he there? They're setting way too much up in the pilot. You can't have this much stuff happen. Like, it's interesting. It could have been good. They would have streamlined it. But they're just packing in too much. There's like a million and one storylines going on. You got the stuff with Jimmy Lee. Um, why is his footprint over there by um, Kelly's dead body? Who wrote him that strange message talking about happy um, with the scribbled out face of Kelly? Like, what's the deal going on with Peter? What's the deal going on with um, Brenda's, like, little play toy and everything? You know, what's going on with Chad? Will Beth and, like, her former, like, um, fiancé get back together? What's the deal with the boss boyfriend, dude? Um, you know, and it's just like this so much. Oh, and then of course there's the, the Trisha stuff and thing going on with Russell. And it's just this too many characters. There are way too many plots and it all got crammed down into one episode. I think if they would have like just cut that in half, then they could have made the show. 
So on Kelly, the back of her neck, there's like an X engraved on her neck, like a tattoo type thing. Same one is on Trisha. Now, when Beth was at the um, someplace, she was talking to like Meghan Markle's character. She's like a fan. She wants her to sign like her book or something like that. When Bethany goes into the school, she sees like an X somewhere and it freaks her out. Why? Don't know. So when they do the autopsy on Kelly, they see that she has white paint underneath her fingernails. It's from the light tower. So Samantha goes there. And so like when she's there, she's getting like these bad like flashbacks of a person being assaulted. It's her. There's a man assaulting her. Don't know who it is. She can't find nothing. Later on, she meets Bethany there. And Bethany tells her, you know, I was there that night when you got assaulted. And, you know, like she was scared and didn't know what to do. And she panicked and talking about how we can't let him pay. And that man is Russell. Russell assaulted Samantha. And so he is a very dangerous man. And they let him get away with that. And then Samantha's all like, she is going to make him pay eventually. But she wants Bethany to leave her alone. As Bethany is like talking to her, she sees a girl mysteriously now in the light tower. Wasn't there when Samantha was looking. That girl is Kayla. She has finally been found. Kayla's in a catatonic state. She will not speak. And it turns out she is pregnant in everything. Could Chad probably be the dad? Who knows? You know what I'm saying? Uh, and then all of a sudden, when nobody's there, she's singing like, um, some type of uh, roses song and then all of a sudden she screams wake up and it ends and so it was just kind of like they're trying to set too much up too much flashiness too much like shock and awe they should have kept it like condensed like i said they really should have focused more on the twins in their story and what could have happened to them at the party that was a huge missed opportunity like you have a show about these missing girls but we don't know nothing about them other than they both blank like this one dude and that's it, you know? Also having every single last main and recurring character, mystery being connected to like Beth's character and Kayla's character was a bit of an overkill like literally every single last character on like the show in their strange mystery is somehow all like connected in some strange way to like the main character like that's just overkill right there like no show is like that and so i think if they were to like just connect maybe four people to her and then connect the other ones to like a, like maybe her sister then that would have been fine you know also they should never have woken up kayla and in fact they probably should have never found kayla in the pilot like you could have shown her like someplace else maybe lost Maybe lay unconscious, um, kidnapped, something. But having her show back up so soon and then having her wake up so she can like talk and tell what's happening. Well, she'll basically just spill the beans like in the second episode or she'll do the whole, oh, I don't remember type thing, you know? And so like it would have built more mystery if they would have like kept her off the show for a little bit. They could have shown flashbacks of like the other characters interacting with her, especially Chad, then that would have been more interesting. And also it would have been even more interesting in the first pilot episode, they would have shown flashbacks of everybody interacting with her and why everybody's so connected. Like why was Trisha at her grave, like, you know, at night putting flowers there? What's her connection right there? You know, because she even said that she didn't go to the party, but she knows her in some capacity, you know? 
Alrighty, well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.